Hey guys, good evening. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Service Without Excuses podcast here. I am still here in cold and frozen New Jersey, and the person and guest I have tonight also has cold and frozen, not typical for his climate. He is in Texas. I believe you're, that's considered South Texas where you are, isn't it, Mason? Uh, Central. Uh, Central. I'm right above Austin, Texas. Okay, okay. That's how much I know about Texas. But to see snow in Texas and to see ice and freezing is not something, nor Texas, yeah, I can see that, but not not the other way around. Mason is somebody with 30 years experience in the cleaning and restoration industry. He has become one of the most well-known faces of the cleaning and, again, restoration industry. The man behind Mason's network, which has over 8,000 members, will show you how a lasting connection with both your clients and employees uh, can bring things together. He started two companies in both the carpet cleaning and transportation industries. I saw this early in your career. You worked at the Crystal Cathedral. Is that the hour of power? Yeah, it sure was. Yeah, oh, my God. Sure I remember that. I see how I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, yep. Robert Schuller. Yes, Robert Schuller. He, you were a housekeeping manager. You were in charge mm-hmm. of the cleaning and maintenance. That place has got to be huge. Um, yeah, exactly. And that's how I got into the cleaning industry. That's amazing. And you meant to work for a company called Alexander's Carpet Care, grew with seven truck mountain you with 17 employees. You also had a limousine service with a total of 10 limos. That's a pretty sizable yes. limo service. And you work with all aspects of the cleaning and restoration. And you are a celebrity in this business. There's not that <laughs> many of you. You are a unique and everybody I talked to went, man, you got to get Mason on here. You got to get Mason on here. You, you guys will, the way you uh, car blanche with people, you guys will go on forever. And I said, no, nah, I stick to 30 minutes. And they basically said, throw that out the window. That's probably not going to happen. So, <laughs> uh, you know, Mason is also an ICRC master textile cleaner, which is an achievement all on its own. Um, I was considered a master water restorer when I did it, but I've since kind of let some of those things go for the most part. But Mason, welcome to the Service Without Excuses podcast, man. It's truly an honor having you here tonight. Well, thank you. I'm excited to be here, and and uh, there's a lot of excitement about what you said. It's it's all pretty true and fun, and you know what's real excited about this industry is how small it really is. You know, don't you agree? Absolutely, it, it really is. I, I thought the music community that I kind of grew up in was a was a was a big industry, but uh, this industry is about actually even I would say even smaller. And it's when I've been to shows and trade shows and festivals, I'm amazed. Everybody's like everybody points out, "Hey, I know you. I know you." Bup, 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 bup. And you're like really and 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 it really is that small like especially since the the growth of these forums like you started and and these these groups uh, i never realized how small it was until then but and and there's numbers behind that that uh i've been able to track and uh so there's a lot of numbers i'll be able to throw you but it is small and and what's really nice is i would have to say majority of in, in this industry most industries they don't help each other but in this industry uh, the groups and people in the neighborhood, like uh, you, you have a huge career of restoration. And I think you were, what, 21 when you got thrown into what, uh, St. Andrew uh, down oh, in Florida? very young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 21? Were you even 21? Or I don't think 12? I was even 21. I think I was barely <laughs> old enough to do it. I, I wasn't even like, it was like between college or I think I was off from school or something. I went down there and I'm like, what, what, what in the hell are we going to do here, man? There's nothing left. It was Homestead. It was outside of Miami. And yeah. uh, it was it was it was it was just destroyed because the Cat Five had gone through and structures were pretty strong, but not built like they are today. So, uh, yeah, I had no idea what I was doing. But yes, that was my earliest career in in the hurricane, and then uh, the next I didn't see another one till Katrina. It, so, what's exciting about that? I also got in the industry at nineteen, but um, didn't start my own company until later. Uh, what happened was I was a janitor. Uh, my wife and I had our first daughter, and uh, so I had to get out of college and uh, go to work. So I was working as a janitor. So I was, you know, the very, very first day of work, I thought I was a maintenance man. So I brought a toolbox from Sears. Remember that place? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I bought a toolbox, brought my tools, went to work, and they're like, hey, put that lunchbox in the in the locker. And I was like, it's not my lunchbox, my toolbox. He goes, put your toolbox in the locker. I put it in there, and he handed me a janitor card, and I was cleaning toilets. So being 19, you don't know a whole bunch, but I cleaned those toilets good and kept on moving up. And every six months I got promoted and I was in charge of the whole facility. 10,661 panes of glass. We only cleaned uh, around 10 feet high. The crane did the rest. Uh, But we, we, I learned a lot. I learned about production, uh, TV production, uh, you know, the hour of power. And I learned how to clean. And what happened was a good friend of mine did a flood. 
one of the buildings had a water loss. He made like $871 off some equipment and worked an hour and a half. And I came home that night and I told my wife, I go, we're starting a carpet cleaning business. So that's how it all started. I used portables, hoist, um, uh, dry, dryomatic, I think it was called. And, uh, so then when I started my own company, I went with a truck mount and, uh, the Chris cathedral was, uh, one of my biggest accounts when I started. So, um, what, when the biggest thing my father instilled in me is you don't burn bridges. Absolutely. Not. He goes, he goes, Mason, you're too big of a, too big and a fat of, of Italian to walk on a burnt bridge. <laughs> so don't burn them. You know, take your time, walk on them, enjoy them. So um, I, I never burned bridges. And that's really nice about the carpet cleaning and restoration. I mean, these these restorers that are in the flood business, they're great. I've seen one guy have prom get in a trailer and truck there and another company went over and helped. So it's really nice how, how this is, you know, a lot of these, not all of them are that way. I mean, there is, you know, you, there is some bad apples, you know, just like with any industry. 100%. Yeah. What yeah, I, what but I, overall, they're pretty good. What I noticed here, I was just scrolling through Mason's network on on Facebook tonight, and this is like real time. You think you're watching like I, I hate to use the word breaking news because people use that common news agencies use that crap as such a you know a, a, we we wouldn't trust a breaking news story if they if they hit us in the face with it now because it's all we've seen for two years mm-hmm. or three years is breaking news. But literally, I'm watching in real time these these uh, these restorers communicate with each other on facebook i need this here i need this anybody available for this i need to cl- right down to i need a cleaning person for a ski loft in vermont in real time i'm watching these i mean over a period of maybe 10 15 minutes i'm watching all these people communicate on your network and honestly i've seen a lot of these face but none of them are even close to that and from what i've seen as far as how quick now i know there's a lot going on right now especially down where you are People are really, they communicate effectively through your platform there on Facebook. Yeah, and, and it's really cool. What what I did is I built the platform, actually a friend named Denver, we went to lunch together and uh, we were going to lunch and both phones were ringing and I was selling so many truck mounts, it was ridiculous. I was selling, you know, 12, 14 truck mounts a month and they only, you know, they only want to sell like 30, you know, 20 to 30 a year. I mean, they want to sell a thousand, but you know what I mean. And um I was selling so much, I was have to help them. So I, I did a lot of YouTubes and stuff. And then John Don was just a great company to work for. And they were like, hey, you know, social media is only these three people you can't be on there. So I started a network on Facebook because you're allowed to have Facebook, just Mason's network. So it's not that I'm proud of my name. I was proud of bringing in income to pay my bills to feed my family, you know, didn't want to lose the job. And uh, so that's how it started. And uh, it just domino effect i started it with just all the people that i sold machines to or i helped and then um john don embraced it they uh steve billy aden uh dave howard all of those guys embraced it and started adding members and um you know sean bc on iicrc instructor out of denver sure uh great guy he he started doug heiferman i can't i can go down the list <laughs> Harry Costa. Yeah. yeah um I could go down the, the list if, if it wasn't for all them uh, embracing it and them seeing value that set the temple. So after they started helping me, everyone knew this was a respected area, you know, Joey right, Pickett. Right. Uh, so everyone was like, this is the place to go. Then I did something even better. And there's no advertising. There's no sponsors. There is no skin in the game. Right. The only skin in the game is you just can't give people a hard time. I mean, don't call them a hack, educate them. Because when every one of us got in the business, you at 19, hack. me at 19, I guarantee you we were hacks. A hundred percent. We didn't want to be a hack. No. We just didn't know. Right. I, I go to, I go to uh, different restaurants and I see a mop and my grandfather was a Navy man, you know, and he, he showed me how to mop, you know? So it's very important to know those skills, but you know, when they don't know how to do it, they don't know how. So you need, you need a mentor, right? A hundred percent. I think about yeah. um, when I was doing water damage cleanups a long time ago. We're talking early '90s, late '80s, something around that that realm. And um, going out and doing a flood and extracting it with portable extractors. You're gonna love this because you can relate. I'm sure of this uh-huh. portable extractors pad underneath, you know, plush thick carpet on top, and you're extracting, you know, with a, with an old mechanical crappy. 
uh, TM, whatever the, the PMF mm-hmm. or whatever wand. And you're, you're, you're taking this thing and you're going back and forth over killing yourself. And then you put a fan on top of it. And the guy you work with just tells you that ah, just let it go. It all dry. And you're thinking to yourself in a God given common sense, the Lord gave you at some point in time said, do you really think that's doing anything underneath? You don't question it because you don't want any better. You're, mm-hmm. The thing is probably still growing a mold for us to this day. I'm, I'm sure of it, but we didn't know any better. Or at least I don't think the person I even worked for knew any better. And if he did shame on him, but um, I remember, I mean, this has got to be late eighties, early nineties. It's, it's a long time ago where literally that's what we were doing and didn't, didn't seem to know any better, but you always question it back in your mind. Does that make a lot of sense? So, so you said something awesome and, and this is, this is a podcast to help the restorers and the cleaners. And, and actually it, it's also a business one too, where people can relate to, you know, the different hats people wear, right? right. I mean, this is just all around, but it's focused around the restores. Mm-hmm. Well, back in 1994, my very first IICRC class was a guy everyone knows, Barry Costa. Sure. And he built a little 18, well, we all did it, 20 inch high wall with uh, plexiglass on the side and those peanuts for packing. So you could see how the airflow would dry. Right. Well, we learned back then with dots, it was red, yellow, and green. And you would mark on the dots every day. So the insurance adjuster would see the readings and see your progress, you know? So, and look at where we are now, infrared cameras. I mean, we're sonic. I mean, Insane. ozones. And yeah. I mean, um, what's a hydrox. I, I can't even tell you the stuff that blows my mind on I, the mold. Um, what's that great company in Atlanta? Sporcine, not Sporcine. And what's uh, serum? Oh, serum. Serum. Yeah. Serum. Serum. So, serum. I, Frank, one of the best salesmen in the industry uh, came from, um, Geez, Kim Speck, you know, for years, okay. he was a, a, a guy there. But anyways, that stuff's awesome, right? I mean, it, it, there there is no bad tool in the trade. Just when do you use it, right? I mean, it's when you're 100%. hanging glass, you don't use a hammer. I was literally at, the, and some of my last couple podcasts were, I was on location. My friend has a company here in Central New Jersey, Sean Ivory with All States Insurance. Sean has a hell of an operation. He's midsize, you know, he's, he's sizable, but still midsize compared to a lot of big players. But he is so focused on the quote unquote standard when it comes to drawing and he'll fight anybody when it comes to mm-hmm. following. He's brought in some of the best consultants. Uh, uh, I think Howie Wolf has been there. I think uh, uh, I forget who he's using right now. In fact, I'm going to be using him on a podcast coming up. But, um, you know, he, uh, gentleman in Florida, can't think of his name, but he is an expert and they're training these guys on doing it by the standard and using the book that both the insurance company and the, rest- the restorers should both agree on. And I'm going through this house before the podcast interview, because I'm doing with his general manager. Um, I, he, I see he goes, come on out. I'll show you how we're using this, this sensing equipment. And literally, this stuff is all over the walls. And it's, and it's not like the stuff that we use where they attach it to an internet access, and it's fine. This literally maps out everything in the house. Oh, is it the picture thing that does the 3D? It's all unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. I, I'm trying to think the name. I just, you know what's unbelievable? You and I add up probably close to 60 years in this industry, right? Yeah, pretty close. And and you think about that. We just (laughs) saw something that's brand new to our industry. You got to make it in the comments below the name. It's a mapping system. It's a picture. I I can't remember the name, but it's remarkable. So you put it in the middle and you put them at the spots. And it gives you a full on 3D of a a complete high rise building, like Die Hard or something, right? It's insane. he, he yeah. literally built it out and he says, there's a sensor here. And some of the sensors he had on the floor were attached to screws that were going into the sill plate, into the wood that would justify the drying that mm-hmm. all of us think, all of us think is dry with a surface meter mm-hmm. and you leave a job and he just proves that it's not to the moisture content it's yeah. supposed to be. And you look at it and then go, and this is like sometimes 10 days, 15 days into a drying job. Now, the old conventional thought is, you know, the Kurt Bolton's of three days and four days and five days max. And he just puts that all to shame and he proves it and justifies it because, again, he's using the same playbook everybody's supposed to play by. Yeah. It's like being in the NFL and everybody agrees to the rules of the NFL. Well, that's pretty much what he's doing. He's saying, listen, these are the rules we all agreed to. This is the standard. It tells you how to clean. It tells you how to do this. Mr. Insurance Adjuster, you're trying to tell us not to do something because mm-hmm. you're you're either 
in cahoots with your pr- provider, you're, you're, you're afraid your claims adjuster is going to rip you apart, whatever that happens to be, or you're just an old dog that doesn't understand new tricks, never will, and shouldn't even be here. At the same time, he is proving to them over and over that these are the rules we all agreed to, and you're not playing by the same rules. And it's yeah. amazing to see, not that I'm going off on that tangent, but it's amazing to see how much technology has leveled the playing field for both sides. Yeah, it's, it's remarkable. And it's even more remarkable that you and I just saw this within the past six months. I just saw it for the first time six months ago. I was over at ACR with Javier and, uh, and Carrie and all that, and I was just blown away. Maybe it's been a year, but it has not been that long. And I, it was remarkable um, what, what I saw. But um, so the tools of the trade, like we were talking about, are very important to have the right tool but you also have to have a lot of tools for the drying and restore. Definitely. Well, one of the tools that you just talked about is a very successful restorer in your neighborhood. You were just talking to Sean, right? Yeah. Yeah. Even he has a consultant and this is not a plug for my consulting company, but I was very lucky. My consultants and mentors um, were Barry Costa, uh, Bill Yaden, Bill Yaden for three and a half years took me under his wing and taught me how to be an instructor and taught me in Sean Dion. So I was very fortunate to surround myself with people smarter than me. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, which I didn't have to raise the bar too high, but, uh, you know, I surrounded <laughs> no. myself with good people. Yeah. So I surrounded myself with good people and, and it helped. Well, my brother, uh, ran very successful businessman. Uh, you know, we were self-groomed to be salesmen and everyone always calls me Mason, the king of sales or the truck mount uh, king. Uh, what it comes down to is, is my childhood. When I was a young man at six, seven years old, my mom every morning at breakfast would do a sales terminology for my dad. He sold cars, shoes, uh, homes, mobile homes, you know, real estate, you didn't name it. He sold it, even mattresses. And um, being Italian, saying mattresses is pretty funny, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I'm Irish. He, we have very short vocabulary too. <laughs> yeah. So he, uh, he, he, he just he we had a terminology every day, and the one I remember most is my mom had. Uh, my wife says it was a chalkboard. I'm going to swear it was a whiteboard, but it probably was a chalkboard because it was a '77. And uh, she she would do one, and one was a sales sandwich. Uh, and you, the bread is positive in the middle and the middle is the negative or, or, or truthful opinion. And, um, she did an example of the Corvette. She goes, I'm going to give you a sales sandwich on a Corvette. It looks beautiful. And everyone's agrees. And in the middle, she said, but you can't look good getting in or out of one. That's true. And then she would come back and say, but the price of this, the Corvette is the best luxury Corvette sports car out there for the price point. And that's how you did it. So we were groomed this way. You know, I, it, my brother always says, you just can't make a salesman. They either have it or not. It's not, it's like an NBA star, right? I just can't go out there and, and play against them. They, they're, they're brought up that way. And, you know, they've practiced hard to get there. Just, and uh, so my brother ended up opening up his own company, but he completed the college and he completed all this stuff. And it was remarkable how him and I did so good in business, but there was a leap year for him. In five years, I was doing, you know, $2 million a year in business and he's doing 10 million, right? Wow. And then I had 17 employees and he has 140 employees. So there's, it's just a difference on, uh, on different levels, right? I was in my twenties. Sure. He was in his forties when he started his. So there's a different uh, maturity level and stuff. And, um, you know, he was established and, you know, he, he's very, patient in everything he does. He, um, I'm very spontaneous. I just go for it and, and it'll work itself out. And he analyzes everything before it happens and he knows why it happens. So that's, he has a, a consultant and he had a consultant for his insurance because you have 142 cars, workman's comp, and he had a consultant for that. I was blown away. Oh yeah. He was paying the consultant $10,000 a year. I'm like, why? And he goes, well, he saves me 20. Exactly. You know, with my policies. And then later he goes, I don't really need him. He's already taught me. He went his path. So they go their path too, right? Just like any instructor. A hundred percent. But anyways, it's really important for everyone. If you can't find the right consultant, I've been a, mo- uh, a mentor to so many people in the industry for free, just like Bill Yaden's been for me and Sean. So I think it's Javier. Javier uh, is at ACR. He's the president of ACR Restoration. 
and he's awesome. He's it, it's remarkable to see a, a gentleman like Javier on his. Oh, that's why we're mostly getting this in business. We're OCD, right? We like it clean. 100%. We like it. Yep. So he's so OCD. He has every business card he ever has in his old business card holder. <laughs> and his rule of thumb is if I give a card, I get a card and that, that thing should will always be full. It's true. And yeah, he has it from like 87. I mean, this is OCD, but, uh, it, it, but the stuff he knows and learned and how he uh, got groomed from the ground up as a cleaner and then doing restoration. And now he's, uh, he, he has one of the biggest restoration companies um, now not one of the biggest, um, Kerry, the owner of ACR and, uh, Javier's the president of the restoration and then, uh, Tuan's the president of the cleaning. They're one of the largest independently owned companies cleaning more carpet in the, in the country than anyone. Oh yeah. They clean huge every state. Yeah. They're huge. So just being around good people, you know, like you calling me and asking me to do this, it's just an honor and excited to have friends and be there. But when, when you really think about it, you really have to look at, at the industry. Do you enjoy it? You know, is it good for you? And um, the tools and learning are pretty, pretty simple stuff. You, you yeah. can learn water damage over 10 years, right? right? And you can buy equipment within five months. But the thing they can't teach you is how to get a customer, retain the customer and treat the customer correctly. Correct. Yeah. You know, and that's why we all go back to that same restaurant or our hairstylist, right? We buy from who we like. So I came up, I did a speech in Las Vegas. It was pretty cool. We raised $24,000 for cancer. Barry Costa and I shaved our beards oh, yeah. that's at, awesome, at the experience. Yeah, it was real fun. And, and I w- was able to speak and there was, I mean, so many people there. It was remarkable. And during the very first time I spoke in public, I talked about lit loyalty, integrity, and trust. And I put up Superman, right? You need this to be a Cape, Cape Crusader, right? To be, to be a hero. Definitely. And um, loyalty, integrity, trust, pretty simple. So when you think about that, what is the kryptonite to those three things? Well, the kryptonite to Superman on that would be a lie, mm-hmm. dishonest. Right. You, 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 you kryptonite, right? You're done. Mm-hmm. So what all I preach to everyone from day one, it's really simple. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Return that phone call. When you make a mistake, tell them, I screwed up. You know, my my cousin here, uh, you know, Frankie, he didn't mess up. I screwed up. This is, I and own it, right? Right. And people respect you for it. And if you lose that customer. And then the hardest one I had to learn the most is to say no. Mm. Is, as a salesman, you always want to go get that job, but sometimes it's not a job. It's not worth it. It doesn't line up good with you. So I had to learn to say no, you know, and say, hey, I would love to help you, but I'm not in a situation where I, I can serve your needs right now. And, oh, my God, I, I'm still learning that. Yeah, you, like, you know, you yeah. become it. You, you have to get to the point And, you know, I, I'm a big do whatever needs to be done. But at the same time, I don't believe anybody should be trampled on and, and taken advantage of. And, yes. and um, what what happens? I mean, in the consulting side that I do. I can tell you probably 35% of the people we, we take on me and my partner, it literally, we, 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 we just let go and we just don't keep them. Uh, as soon mm-hmm. as we can make that change to, 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 you know, to go in a different direction we do because they're not playing on the same, you know, field. It's like, it's like playing for the same NFL team. I always use sports yes. analogies, but that one person has to be, and I'm a Steelers fan, so I'll say Antonio Brown. I mean, I'm glad he got himself a Super Bowl, but when he was on the Steelers, he was a giant pain in the ass, and he he had to be all about him. Well, he was yeah. a great player, but he wasn't a great player on the Steelers. He certainly performed, certainly could perform very well. He's one of the best to ever play that position in the NFL, but he wasn't good for the team, you know? And that, you, you just said it great. My son plays baseball. Uh, we're so baseball nuts. I'm putting a baseball diamond in my backyard for him. You know, so we're really baseball nuts. And my son said the other day about a player and I said, you know, he's a pretty good player. And he goes, no, he's not a good player. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, if he doesn't listen and he doesn't respect the teammates, he's uncoachable, dad. That doesn't make a good player. Oh, man. You need that more important. And my son's 11 years old. Oh, God. Man, you got a blessing there, my friend. He gets that lesson. People at the age of 70 don't get that. (laughs) 
I mean, it's 70. You're going, okay. And you watch them and they explain everything that everybody else is doing wrong. And this is this, and this is this. And I literally had to say, listen, dude, here's a mirror. Look in it. There's the problem. If you can't accept that, then that's your hang up Mm -hmm. period. And, you know, being a, a, a former athlete, a musician, both of them are t- kind of competitive. I've just been a competitive person. In fact, my wife just did this whole thing on Facebook that sits down and uh, tells each person that is somebody, you know, between the two of them, which one is which. And then we said competitive. She went, oh, my God. And I'm not even on the same page because he is. <laughs> I, and I, But I'm really competitive against myself. I'm not really competitive against anybody else. I just know that if I slack, like I'm, I'm fix and finish this book. I literally got to almost 12,000 words on this book in about <laughs> – two weeks now understand something i have add in the worst way okay (laughs) so to write a book is torturous for me to sit down and put it on paper but it's something so important to me that is overlooked it's a great marketing asset she needs to be part of every business it's reviews and the power of views and the power of overlooking it but to write well, almost 12,000 words on reviews. You've got to really do some research. It's a pretty, mm-hmm. it's, it's not an e, it's not an easy thing. It's a simple thing, but there's a lot to it to be able to do it. And when you have ADD, you, it's like pulling, it's like taking your nails down a chalkboard for a person with ADD to sit there and, and compartmentalize each part of that book in order to write it. But yeah. ultimately you have to say, all right, bullshit no more excuses i'm just gonna do it enough i don't want any distractions i need to get it done i'm doing it while i'm not super busy if i got a day off because it snowed pretty good today i'm gonna take advantage of that i i categorize everything and if anybody's ever written anything right down to an article it doesn't just pop in your head if anybody sits there and says i wrote a great song i wrote a great article in a few hours it's it's bullshit because you actually wrote it over a period of 20 years and the article came to you maybe in that period of time, maybe you just had a, a great point of inspiration, but it's the 20 years of, of, a, of, of learning all of that in order to bring that to the table. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, no, I, I do. And, and like you said, you know, having ADD, you know, I, it, it's just, it's even harder, right? It's like you have to discipline yourself and, and you know what? A very, a very good friend told me once, he goes, you know what, Mason, don't work on your weaknesses. I'm Mm -hmm. like, well, if I get to my weaknesses, good, I'm good. He goes, no, hire out your weaknesses. hundred percent. Work on your strengths. There was a book by Marcus Buckingham. I don't mean to cut you off. Marcus Buckingham years ago, uh, Marcus worked for, he's a genius. I saw him speak years and years ago. And it's still my favorite book to this point. It's called Now Discover Your Strengths. And Marcus worked for a Gallup poll. Gallup was a big, and is still a big pollster company, not political pollsters. This is about other stuff. This isn't that craziness. But Marcus wrote a book. And what what it encompassed was people worry about, uh, improving their weaknesses instead of over instead of embracing their strengths as their strengths mm-hmm. and pushing the weaknesses off. And eventually the weaknesses either become a strength because they just kind of rise up to it or there's something that you just can't do. Like there's if you want to work on your truck, I'm mechanically inclined enough to work on a truck mount but I'm not efficient to work on a truck mount. I could yes. pay somebody to do that. If I need somebody yes. to have a big yard, it costs $45 for somebody to cut the grass. It takes two hours for me to cut and trim the grass. Yep. And I'm working 50 hours a week, yep. 60 hours a week, every week. I don't have time to do that. So why are you best to do it? this other guy is in and out of there in, in 20 minutes. It's two hours for me. Cause he's got a whole crew and he's boom finished. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in two hours, you're not finished. Nope. No, <laughs> I, I'm dying out there in the heat, and I, I have a pool that's yeah. surrounding me right in the middle that yeah. I just want to jump into, and you can't yeah. do it. So people get yeah. in their own way all the time, yes. and that's the toughest thing. If you're if you're advising somebody, mentoring somebody, for them to get that, listen, man, you just got it. We all, we all experienced it. We all had to figure out over time. Experience goes over, as we were just talking, 30 years, each of us, all these life experiences. They're not business experiences. They're life experiences. Yep. Yes. You know, everything is an, everything is a learning every day you learn. And when somebody says to me, you know, I think I've learned it all. You have not. You have now limited your mentality, your growth potential. Yes, your brain will only take on so much information. That is a fact. However, how much of the right information goes in there is up to you. You, you totally nailed it. And and when you think about it, that business, I, I get hired a lot as a consultant. And, and the bigger the company is, 
the more they need a consultant. It's mm-hmm. amazing. So I went into a humongous company, really good. And I went in and, and took everyone out to lunch, all those employees. And that was mine. I was hired as a consultant to evaluate a, you know, a different part. And I go, no, we have another issue. I need to do this first. I interviewed all the employees. Well, one of the employees, not everyone bagged on this one employee, but this one employee begged on everyone at the company. Hmm. And then I evaluated and I came back and, and you know, I couldn't sleep. My wife's like, what's wrong? And I go, I, I don't know what to do here. And I go, this is going to be hard. These are people's careers and jobs. And uh, she goes, there's suggestions, Mason. Don't worry about it. She's right. So I came in and, and, and gave my suggestion on what I think as an outsider. And I told him, I go, I, you know, I had a hard time with losing sleep. He goes, don't do that ever, Mason. He goes, you just verified what I already knew. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and even a consultant, right? I'm being hired as a consultant. Even I am le- learning every time. You're always learning, right? I don't yep. care who you are. You're always learning. Mike Trout, one of the best baseball players of today's era. Oh, yeah. And I love him. He hits off a tee every day, mm-hmm. inside, outside pitch. And he had to learn how to hit a different pitch because the pitcher started finding out that's his weak spot, right? Right. And if he wants to be playing, you know, for another 10 years, which he's, you know, what is he, 27 years old, young man. Mm-hmm. And um, I think he is 27. His player number is 27. So he might be 25, right? He's Whatever. very young. He, yeah. He, remarkable. And you know, he's from New Jersey. Yep. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So um, anyways. Not far guy. from where I'm at, actually. He's he's actually Mike Trout is from uh, the Toms River area, which um, you said your family originally was in Long Branch. So I yep. am I'm yep. about Toms River is literally the next town south of me. And I, we actually know where Mike Trout lives, and yeah, yeah, he's he's, he's from right here, and he's a, he's an incre- and an incredibly nice guy as well, yes. mature, very very mature, but a very, very nice mature, <laughs> very mature. But even him are, is training and learning all the time, right? We're 100%. all training and learning. And when you when so what you have to do is you have to look at any company, and a lot of people say three legs, right? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Everyone has a three-legged table, but what I like to do is not scratch any of that, but look at it like an assembly line Ford. When they made their cars, uh, Ford would contact all the vendors shipping and products, metal chairs, whatever is starters, engines, right? Whatever they were mailing them. He said, I want them in this size of a, of a freight box. He would reuse the wood for the cars. Mm. So he had a process, right? Mm-hmm. He wouldn't do it. Another company I, I'm really fond of is McDonald's. I, yes. I studied about McDonald's and KFC in college, even FedEx. Right. You know, I want to leave. I want to make sure everyone knows at the end. Please hang on to this stuff. Do not leave. I will leave you with 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 something of value. You guys are giving me your time, your ear, and I cannot thank you and appreciate everyone listening today. Uh, for this. So I'm going to make sure I give you something of value at the end. But McDonald's, FedEx, and KFC, remarkable. Let's do the easy one, uh, FedEx. FedEx in the 70s, I believe it was 75, 76. Um, I studied on this in college too. He ran out of money for fuel. His fuel bill was $21,000. He flew from Atlanta to Vegas with the $5,000 in payroll, made his money, and wired the money back. Did you know that? I did. Yeah, remarkable, huh? Yeah, yeah. The KFC, how about this one? KFC. He did not own the company the last 10, 15 years, so, um, other businessman, and they just hired him as a consultant sure. or to be the face. What he did is remarkable. He uh, was in the military. He did all the all the stuff, but he had the very first restaurant, gas station, and hotel. Great Depression, he went bankrupt again. Right. So everyone's ahead of their, their time that are really ones that go after it. Right. So you, you look at McDonald's, McDonald's was not making any movie, a great movie called the founder by Mm -hmm. Ray Crocs in it. And they weren't making all the money until they started buying the land. Right. And then they started making the money. So McDonald's was very lucky. Ray Kroc was part of it. And they were very lucky uh, that one man got involved with the real estate. And when you watch the, so Right after college, I met I met this great guy who worked there, and he was their accountant. And um, what he said is when they open a brand new McDonald's, and this teaches you about assembly. I know it seems like I'm going away, but you know how you relate to like a baseball game, mm-hmm. a football game? I, I'm relating to McDonald's on this one. So McDonald's opens a brand new store. 
the store is brand new. The refrigerators, the ovens, everything's brand new. What happens five years later, it all depreciates and it's out, right? Right. So what they did is they replaced some of it at three years. They replace some at five and they repair some until seven and eight. Now they have a new cycle. They fix the problem. Yeah, their own level so of depreciation. You, yeah, depreciation. So what are you doing with your company today, with your customers, with your employees? There's more than your customers. You've got internal customers, which is your employees, right? Right. So you can't lie to your employees or your customers. You lie to your customers, your employees see it, right? Right. So you you have to really look at it. But McDonald's is a great company to look at that assembly line. I love McDonald's so much. I went and got the multi-mixer that Ray Kroc had in the stores in the 50s. I have two of them. Oh, my and I God, make really? Oh, yeah, I'll send you a picture of it. I, I'm such a McDonald's nut that I would want to even buy a 1953 Plymouth uh, Cranbrook, uh, two door just to have, and, and maybe go make sales call with, you, you know, know, you just, brought, the tree. you just brought up something really profound. A lot of people weren't aware of this. Now this is years ago. It's obviously changed. But when I told the story, I says, you know, who is the second biggest land holder or real estate holding company in the United States? I, and I, I was going to say McDonald's before that was the Catholic church right? was the Catholic church. Yeah. It's since changed. Obviously they sold yes. off a lot of the resources when things went a little in a little different direction. We'll leave it at that. But, uh -huh. um, but yes, McDonald's was the second, all of their money was uh -huh. made on, on owning the real estate. And in fact, mm -hmm. there's a really good book. And if you've been to Chicago and you have, so if you've been to Chicago at any point, anybody's listening to this in Chicago knows the name Portillo's it's about like McDonald's in yep. Chicago. Yep. So Dick Portillo has written a book out of the doghouse. It's a brilliant book. I've seen dick speak in person by the way he's just a little bit of a he's a little eccentric but he is brilliant now his past came from a guy like you talk about a rags to riches story dick came from uh real humble beginnings on the, on the south and north side of chicago in rough in in the it used to be the before the cabrini green projects which were legendary you know horror shows before that it was mother francis cabrini he grew up in that and then he went off to the military and the marines did a stint i think it was four years six years or whatever he got and he got out and he, and he got married to his wife and literally it's like howard partridge's story it's literally the same type story he took the wedding from the, mo the money from the wedding rather and took it and bought this little trailer and remodeled it in i think oak park uh illinois i believe that's where uh -huh. it was and he started from scratch no running water nothing listen at the end of the day the guy was doing over a billion dollars a year <laughs> each each facility made chick-fil-a's revenue look small i think chick-fil-a is like four million he was like seven million per pratillo's he has over $1 billion or had over $1 billion in sales when he sold it to a private equity firm that's involved with Warren Buffett. Here's the thing. Dick kept all the real estate. He said, you know what? I mean, it's changed a little bit now with COVID and making a little worse. But at the end of the day, Dick literally owns the land all the Portillo's are on. And Portillo's, the company that Berkshire Hathaway invested into the Portillo's brand, pays Dick to – have the, to, to have their business that Dick owned, that Dick sold to them on that property. That is so, brilliant. So Dick, Dick, Ray Kroc, uh, Warren Buffett, you know, all, all these guys are workaholics, right? Oh, yeah. And most of the, you know, you know why someone's self-employed? Because they don't want to work 40-hour weeks. They wanted to work 80-hour weeks. That's true. You know, that you, you don't go to be self-employed. Anyone said, oh, I want to be self-employed so I control my own hours. You don't control anything <laughs> if you're self-employed. That's like but, saying I want I only I I don't want uh I don't want to work for my boss anymore. No, stupid. You just traded one boss for hundreds or thousands of bosses. Yes. So, so Ray Kroc and Walt Disney both were EMTs in the military together. So when Ray Kroc finally bought McDonald's, he wrote um Walt Disney a letter. And uh, remember, McDonald's always had Disney stuff. It's true. Yeah. You know, so kind of kind of cool on in a bigger industry. Right. Disneyland and McDonald's were just like our industry. We all know each other. We all help each other. Right. And it, what, what a remarkable thing. Later, Ray Kroc ended up owning the Padres and he ended up donating half of his all of his income to uh, YMCA, I believe. Yes. Or Boys and Girls Club in San Diego. One of those. And uh, so it's, it's really remarkable, but everyone, if you want to be successful, uh, you know, you, you talk about reading a lot of books, Bill Yadin reads a lot of books. Oh my God. I got to tell you, books are the way to do it. Warren Buffett. And if you don't like reading or don't have time, get books on tape, audio books. 
it is remarkable. When I was traveling on the plane, uh, one year I was on 180 planes, 300 hotels, every state but two. Audiobooks were my friend. I was listening. Warren Buffett has, and and I and this is not for a fact, I just heard this on the news, that, uh, that every morning he goes to McDonald's, which he has stocks in, right? Mm-hmm. And what he would do is if the stock's up, he would have a little more money to go buy you know, an egg McMuffin with coffee or something, you know, and his wife would give him allowance. He still lives in the same house. Very modest you know? house. Very modest. Very modest. He owns Nebraska Furniture. And you know what he does every time he buys a company? You probably don't know this one. I'm probably going to get you on one. You ready? Sure. He goes and looks at the bathroom. I did he not said, know if they that. can't take care of their bathroom, they can't take care of their business. Ah. <sighs> I got a bathroom story, but that's that's related to Trump and his real estate hunting. But very similar, very very similar. When it when he was on top of his game and had a bunch of real estate, you know, things, he would look at the bathroom and he would, you know, it was it was really a, a project in management. He would you know look in the bathrooms at the facilities he would have, and if he walked in there was toilet paper on the floor, he would say, you know, like the typical corporate, he's got eight people walking behind him. He'd just say, hey, can yeah. you get somebody to get in here to clean it? And he'd start walking down the hallway in a different direction, and then come back you know, out of the blue, just turn around and come back and look in there, you know, half an hour later, if it wasn't done, he would, of course, fire the person or mm-hmm. at a minimum, write up with a final warning, um, the person that was in charge of making that happen, because he wanted his people to be leaders, to actually lead yeah. and take take that, you know, uh, example from that standpoint. You know, I heard a saying, and I'll, I'm going to get right back to you in one second. You were talking about reading and again, ADD, hard to read, I've had it all my life but I've read a lot of books. And the thing that really stuck with me, and I heard this from Dan Kenny. Dan Kenny's kind of a famous marketing copywriter. And I know, I don't think he made it up, but somebody, he said somebody else said, he goes, poor people have big TVs, rich people have <laughs> big libraries. And it's the truth. Like I don't have any big TV. Like we have a Vizio TV that's sort of big in the room, but it's, it's, it's not new. It's not modern. I do have a new Roku TV in the back because our other TV died. You know, I don't I don't spend time on the TV. I spend time reading, listening to audible books, watching programs. I'm, I'm researching into Pat Flynn, which is the, the foremost uh, podcast teacher, you know, pretty much in the United States. I'm, I'm learning that, you know, but there's so many other things to do than to watch, you know, uh, Law and Order, which I love, which I love, by the way. There's so yeah, many yeah, things you can and do. And there's nothing wrong with uh, it, it, what you're, what you're, what he's just referring to. It really doesn't matter if you have an 80-inch TV or drive an Escalade or whatever. But what they're saying is, p- business-minded people really focus on learning, focus. and always educating, and focus, focus, focus. Yep. And and they're driven, right? Mm-hmm. So um, one thing that I I'm very fond of is I'm a hard worker. I'm very hard worker. I never sent one of my employees to a job that I wouldn't do. Now, I've sent people to jobs that I can't do right. all the time, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm good with that, but I, I wouldn't ever send them in harm's way or something that I wouldn't risk myself to. So if I want to get on that ladder at 800 feet, I'm not going to send any of my employees up there. So, uh, and that's what it is. You have to really be driven and focused. And I understand exactly. And I love that. I've heard that saying before. And you really got to think about business. Remember when you started your company, how exciting it was. It was like, you know, I have three beautiful children. I have a daughter who's 30, a daughter who's 24 and a little boy that's 11. And Sheila and I, I, it was remarkable every time I was more concerned about my wife each birth than, than, it, than the kids, you know, I'm like sure, freaked sure. out, you know, like you're going to give me a kid and you're going to leave me. Mm. That's not good. <laughs> you know, uh, I can make money. I don't know how to raise them. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, you, you figure it out, right? You figure but it out. When, when, when you think about it, you're, you're always learning and progressing forward and, and you have to focus on that. So when I had my baby, I was so happy to hold her and, and be there all the time and buy her gifts. Well, that was your company, right? Your right. company was your baby. You were excited. Then later somewhere, uh, loss and transparency, you, 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 you lose focus, Mm-hmm. And you, you, it's not your baby. And now you're just irritated and you're just trying to get, you've got to find the love for your business. People can feel that off you. So I love what I do. I enjoy it. I go out day and night. I couldn't go out the past two days because we not just snowed in, not just iced in, but we're losing power, right. water. We haven't had water in two days. Oh, we're boy. picking up ice, shoveling ice in the bathtub so we can flush the toilets. Mm. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm realizing how much stuff I really don't need in my life, you know, 
Yeah. All I want to do now, I have two acres. All I want to do is get a well and a solar panel. Now, I mean, that's like my goal in life is to have those two things get off the grid. Mm-hmm. But um, kind of hard to do that when, when I'm in the country, but not that far. Right. But um, so you have to always remember your company, your excitement about it, right? right? And 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 that's one thing to you know, almost a week been locked up in the house uh, is that I enjoy my family. Well, that's your business. Right. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Focus on it. Always go to trade shows. Always. And I'm not speaking that, you know, the um, the experience. Larry Cooper um, does a great job with the uh, carpet cleaning and restaurants. Uh, IS, ISSSA has a great one. I love any of them. I, I go to trade shows that are free. Right. I go to trade shows that cost money. I'm always learning. So speaking of that passion, I love marketing. I could do so much with marketing. It's unbelievable because I do a twist on the marketing. I find stuff not in our industry and bring it here because we are so far behind in our industry compared to the other industries, oh, yeah. you know, like Coca-Cola and all. So uh, you guys, I, I'm going to, I don't want to jump on the, the tidbit yet, but you're going to love it. But um, so I bring in other industry. So because of Mesa's network with over 8,000 members, and I've been reaching out to almost every member I've been trying to call. Now, it's really hard because so they're in Australia, England, everywhere. But I'm calling every member, talking to them, and I'm verifying that they're really part of the group. What's going on? What can I do to help? And, I, and you know, I've made probably 1,200 members phone calls already. Jeez. So having Mason's network, there's a whole bunch of of analytics behind the scenes of the group. And I'll show you this to you sometime, but I can see what time of the day people get on, how many people look at a post. I just made a post yesterday, 5,900 members looked at it within the first 12 hours. That's crazy. Yeah, 6,000. So I don't just know the carpet cleaning restoration. I got my thumb on it. Right. I am on top of it by knowing what what has driven them to go to Mason's network on Facebook and and see what what is out there to help? And these guys are giving away work, you yeah. know. ACR they give away twelve to sixteen jobs a day across the country, and 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 then they have to be verified, of course, you know, and show business proof and all that stuff. Right. So there's a whole process um, to get on their list. But there, so it's so cool that we're bringing everything away. We had that tsunami, that earthquake. It wasn't a tsunami. It was an earthquake that flooded Alaska, Anchorage. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scott, pioneer carpet clear up there, uh, Turnick, just a great guy, him and his wife. Uh, we went snowmobiling uh, two years ago. He took me into a real glacier. I've never been oh, in wow. there. One of the guys from Alaska, uh, Ty, was there, 50 years old. And uh, he, he looked around and he goes, you've never been in a glacier. I've lived here my whole life. I've never been in a glacier. <laughs> so, so, you know, you always have to expand your horizon and see what you can do. But by that, by knowing Scott in Alaska, we were able to cover those water damages and extract. And then Carrie personally flew up there to oversee it because they always want to have, you know, they want to have control of it. And, and, you know, it, it's like a cake, a recipe, right? We can we can throw it all in, but if you don't throw it in the right mixture, it's not going to make the bread or the cake, right? right. And, I, and I love cake and cookies, so do not mess with my cake and cookies. I'll still <laughs> eat them. So, so um, Carrie flew up there. That's an owner that cares, right? Right. And um, so it's all about it, it. You know, it's all about control, but also know when to let go. So it's more about focus and driven than control, I believe. But control is one. The the biggest thing about business I could tell everyone right now is employees are an issue. Everyone's saying employees are hard. A lot of people's minimum wage is moving up to 15 bucks an hour. And I please no one strike me and scream at me for this, but that's what you know the news says, right? And um, so if that's happening, cost of goods are going to go up and it's probably going to be harder to find someone to be a water damage tech. Right you know, and pay them. I don't know if you know, know your pay, but in the nineties, I was paying 10 bucks an hour. Well, it's, it's where we're at too. Like the starting pay rate here in New Jersey is 18 to $20 an hour for anything uh, that, that has any for, skill. For your trade, to, but what's minimum, what's minimum? Oh, wage whatever the national minimum wage, it's, 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 it's moderate. It's eight it's, or it's, 10 bucks. Yeah. It's, it's so, very small. Yeah. So if, if minimum wage goes up to 18, say you're not going to get a tech at 18, right? No. So, so you, you, this, right. you got, I'm going to give two 
great things of value on this show, show today. So right now is the first one. A friend of mine was having a huge problem finding employees. Mm-hmm. And I never had a problem finding employees. I'm just an outgoing guy. I treat people right. And I just go, he was having a huge problem. He goes, yeah, Mason, that worked in the 90s. <laughs> For the past 10 years, you know, 15 years, you've been corporate. And you have, you know, 401ks and company trucks and company this and that, company credit cards, 401ks, everything, health insurance. He goes, small mom and pop can't compete with that. He goes, but guess what I did? And I go, what did you do, buddy? He went on a four day a week schedule. This younger generation doesn't care about extra hours and overtime and stuff. They're, they're different. We're different, right? Right. And, and our parents were different. You know, my dad in Jersey had to walk to school barefoot in the snow and home both ways uphill. Right. Yeah. I never had to do that. Right. right. So, so this younger generation is different. They know how to text. They know how to, you know, they were raised with cell phones. We weren't right. We had to just talk on, we had to come home when the street light came on. We played ball in the street. So it's a different generation, but this generation, what he did is he did the government four day a week. He found out now he's two, three employees extra waiting list to be on his team. Okay. And he only has a small company. And he found out that the Monday through Thursday, the guys like it because they have a longer weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. One guy, he was a dad and his wife would go to work as a waitress. So he would work Friday, Saturday, have Friday, Saturday and Sunday off so they can have dual incomes. Right. So they, and, and me being a workaholic, there was a lot of times. I was working two jobs right? and my, my wife would meet me in a parking lot knowing I'm working holic. I, I love her so much. Sheila, she's just an awesome woman. I've been with her for uh, 32 You're a lucky years. Man, my friend. That's awesome. Yeah, 30 years of marriage this April. Congratulations. She would meet me in a parking lot with a suit and tie and say, Hey, you have this carpet cleaning job. I pull up in my van and she goes, no, put on the suit and tie. It's daddy daughter dance. I never <laughs> missed one event because she always lied to me. You know, but um, she did that because it was what's best for the family. Right. 100%. And that's what that that's what they do. They they protect us and they they keep it just like we protect them. So um, I have no regrets in my life. Um, I haven't always made the best choices. I make mistakes every day, but I have no regrets. I love who I am. So I really think that if you look at an employee in a different way than we look now, water damage tech might be different an airline might be different. I'm not saying this works for everything. I'm just saying if I was going to do it, I have a mom and pop carpet cleaning business in my small town and how I would do it would be a four day a week and schedule around that. And I wouldn't focus so much. And, you know, I'm talking about not doing water damage and we're, we're doing so many jobs now with water damage. It's ridiculous. Right. But it's not my, my, my cup of tea. Right. But my it's, it's what's is, there right now. And you're almost yes. helping the, the, the because yes. it's so you're so inundated. And honestly, I was thinking about this today. Cause I, I have a, uh, I, you, I think, you know, Clark Brown, I'm not sure if you do or not, but Clark is a big advisor in the restoration industry. And he put out a, th- a thing today. And it was picture of Atlanta. It wasn't in Texas, but they, there was snow on the ground. Now there's not a lot of snow in Atlanta either typically. Um, but he said, look at all these unqualified restorers going to the area, you know, and, and I've, we've done the company I used to call on, we've done work in Texas and man, you got to Listen, if you're from out of the area and you, you try to come in, they will not play with you. They, they, they don't, they don't like people from out of town at all in any way, shape or form. So my, my whole point of this is, and I think Clark's was, and Clark being a native of Texas, um, you're doing your own community a benefit by keeping it. They know you. You're not going to be leaving town tomorrow. You're not going to be getting up and packing up all your trucks and equipment and going to Missouri tomorrow to chase something else. You're in the community. You're part of the community. So because you're there and you're part of that, you're actually helping others. Yes. You have to make a living. Everybody has mm-hmm. to be done. You're not going to rip somebody off. You're going to do right by them. You're going to give them the right advice. You're going to help them any way you can. But the whole thing is you're part of that. You're not from the outside. Yep. So you're, you're and, and you gotta you gotta go help. Yeah, and that's what you're doing yep. right now. I mean, listen, yep. I did yep. it for right 25 now. years. I I was in several hurricanes and I saw twister damage. I've been all over the country for 20 plus years, and you know it, it was it was a journey and it was it had its own moments and I I thoroughly enjoyed most of it. Um, but I, I didn't w- I wanted to go to bed and not have to get up at two o'clock in the yep. morning to go and do a flood. And I, I did that so many times. My sleep patterns got messed up and it, it's it's yep. permanently messed yes. up. I'm still trying to focus that back. So you <laughs> have to find out what is 
it, it is makes you happy, makes the most point. I'll give you a quick yep. story and I'll come right back to your Mason. So I was talking to this about with a guy that's a mindset coach yesterday and he was unbelievable. <laughs> I, I felt every therapist I ever talked to in my entire life in 30 minutes, he just destroyed. So it, it was, it was really sound advice. And one of the things we talked about was I started this podcast originally last year. Okay. I worked it up. I got 12, 14 episodes. I get what's called new and noteworthy on Apple on iTunes, which is a real good distinction on a thing because, and they don't rate it on your episodes. They're rated on the content you're putting out. They write it on the engagement people have with it. So to get new and noteworthy in your first 12, you had to have something right. But what did I do like an idiot? I was so busy with my cleaning business and so busy partnering with somebody doing the, the consulting and the coaching end of it that I couldn't see. And then, of course, I added a new addition onto the business, cleaning pavers, like I talked about. So I couldn't do anything. And I totally let it go. It sat there like dust collecting yep. on it. And then one day I'm down in Florida. I go help my wife working on her father's house. He had a little bit of uh, mold damage. Of course, that, that wasn't a big deal. So I went down there, cleaned that all up. And I had my podcasting stuff. I said, you know, I, I bought this Pat Flynn program. I'm going to really dig into it. And I got into it. And, and I didn't even even get into two things. I went, Oh my God, why am I not doing this all the time? This is what I, I mean. I love this more than yeah. anything, coaching, consulting, playing music. There's nothing to me that I enjoy more than engagement with somebody else and either getting something out of them or them giving something to me back that I'm learning from. And this is the yeah. best format to me actually right now without even video, just listening to this. This is what I grew up under. I didn't have a TV. We had a little tiny black and white TV when I was a kid. So I had to listen to the radio, mostly AM radio. Mason, you're my age. It was AM radio. It wasn't FM radio. FM radio came a little bit later. So you had to listen to the voice and the voice gave you advice. The voice gave mm -hmm. you comfort. The, the voice helped you. And I never forgot that. And I'm, and I'm talking to my mother today. She goes, you always had this ability. You should have been a radio guy because you had that natural ability. And what I love about it is, is, is getting information and then finding a way to put it into a, a, a circle that helps somebody. Because ultimately, that's what we're doing. We're helping somebody. Yep. Yeah. And, and you know what? You're. So I, I started a podcasting around four years ago, and it's just on, on the air with Mason, right? And I only have 25 episodes, and you have, to, you have to constantly be doing it. That's why you're doing, what, two or three today, right? So you always yeah. got to do it. I, I really like the 30-minute one um, up to an hour. I, I, I've done some for 30 minutes, and the, and the people would call me and say, Mason, hey, so why did you stop? It was just getting hot. You're the but exception, like, not oh. the rule here, dude. I always stop at 30 minutes. I, I talked to a guy that was senior VP with Disney. He was a top five guy, and we stopped him at 30 minutes. You're still going yeah. 57 minutes later. That gives you any idea. Yeah, yeah. So it just, it just in, embraces. But what you're doing on the podcast, I believe podcasts are, are, are totally – and it's been around for the longest time. You just told about how long ago you started it, so it's been around. It he comes back and it goes out. It is going to be the way with audiobooks and the podcasting. Is, is this is where people are going to really listen and learn and what you're doing for this the community and every, and just me general. It's just awesome that you're connecting more of us with our voice and they get to know us, right? Yeah. So it, it's remarkable. What I, I love podcasting. Uh, they're fun, and uh, your content is great. The people and you know the people, and it's not like a young buck coming in the industry. Oh, so what is, what's an eight track, you know, what's mm -hmm. Quasar, you know, <laughs> and, you know, so it's, it's really cool to have all that, all that, you know, it just experience, like you said. Right, right. You, and, you know, just experience. And I think the cleaning and restoration, like there are a couple guys that have really, like, I, I just had on the gentleman from Blue Collar Nation. You were on his, he was on yesterday yeah. and I had a second one on today and I was very grateful. Eric but, and Larry. Yeah. Eric was on, Eric was on. Yep. Eric is a He was all, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And, and, um, I'm actually going to do one of their podcasts. He asked me to do it uh, last night or today. I forget what it was, but um, I had Ben Surdy on here coming up today. Now, Ben runs a big company in Washington. He's a big in, player. In Seattle. In Seattle. He's a great guy. Yeah. And, great guy. and but he, he messaged me earlier this morning and they have a lot of weather problems up there. He's actually up at a cabin with his family. And, and he says, listen, I'm sorry, man. I don't have, we we're stuck here. The highways are, are out. Um, mm -hmm. I have internet access on my phone, but the Wi-Fi is down at the house. I don't know if this is going to hold up if I do this. And I wanted to tell him, but I was like, listen, no big deal. I got Mason tomato tonight. I got plenty of content. No worries. <laughs> I says, I got to finish my book. Other things. Don't worry about yeah. it. But I wanted to say to him and I just didn't want to get, it. I'm like, dude, how dare you even book a podcast while you're with your yeah. family? Don't do it, man. Yeah. Don't. I, I, I'm a guy that went through a divorce by letting my business take over. The last thing I want to see when you're with your family and you're away at a cabin, 
don't worry about scheduling. We'll do it another day. It, this yeah. is not, this is, this is going to, I'm planning to have this around for a long time. So we can do this next week, the week after your family's here right now. Tomorrow's never guaranteed. Now I wasn't going to get into the way to tell him that because I'm going over text message with him back and forth, but yeah, you know, he, you know, he runs a great, and his story is absolutely fascinating and I can't wait to have him on, but that's the stories that I want to bring out with podcasting is really, I, this is the industry I know and love. This is the industry I've been around for a long time. Now I, I work with people that are in plumbing, HVAC, but it's all very similar in, in, in essence, so to speak, but I like tying the knots and people getting information, yep. getting used to one another. My whole goal is to literally have Gary Vaynerchuk on one of my podcasts. The other thing is when you walk into a convention or meeting, somebody knows your voice from mm-hmm. one of the podcasts. Like they don't recognize you by talking to you. They recognize your voice. Yeah, that would be it's... the most ultimate. Co- hey, I know your voice because I heard you on the podcast. That would be the ultimate compliment because then now we've connected each other to each other's voice. Yeah, it, remarkable. And then they they talk about a story. Uh, I go to trade shows, you know, with, you know, over 8,000 friends on LinkedIn. I'm probably 14,000 people. So you go to a trade show and they already know you. And it's it's pretty remarkable that, um, you know, it, just technology, everything coming around full circle. What I like about your podcast is it's it's raw. And yeah. what I mean raw in a compliment, we didn't stage this. I don't have a script. We just shoot from the hips, personal experience, passionate for this industry passionate for people. So that's really cool. So right now what's going on in February, 2021. So if in, in 200 years, when you guys are listening to this, you can look it up on your, your Google site or whatever, or maybe AOL will come back, right? Like the Brady bunch and colors came back. It's you possible. got mail. <laughs> maybe possible. it'll come back. You know, AOL dial up might be back, but um, <laughs> what, <laughs> what's going on here is that the whole state is in chaos. Yeah. We, we, we got zero degrees, one degrees, negative degrees in areas that don't get snow. Uh, they haven't had snow like this in 60, 70 years. And then we went green. So we have a lot of turbines and uh, tr- doing our electricity where they all froze and broke. We lost power. We lost water. Cell phones not working. And it, it's just remarkable. And it's just so sad. And you feel for everyone. I, I, I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle of the the yeah. state, you know, I'm sorry. All you guys are yeah. going through it. My certainly prayers yeah. go out to Texas it, and Texas got hit so hard in the last, last few years, going back to the flooding in Houston. And no. I mean, just enough has to be enough. We're used to the freezing temperatures up here. We're, we're conditioned for it. And even that temp, even those temperatures here, like we've had them and we're, we're pretty conditioned to them. We're conditioned to them as people. Here's the problem. The buildings are not conditioned to them. You, you nailed it. So you guys have basements. We don't. We have raised foundations because we have water and, and uh, hurricanes, right? Right. So we have different things like that. We also lost power, so we can't even warm up the pipes. So sprinkler systems are flooding out buildings. We water mains are flooding. We have we. The, it's like the whole state. It, it's it's really bad. It, it's really bad. Now I'm more aware of areas like Houston, Austin, Dallas. You know, areas like that I'm more aware of. Right. That's where I have mo- most of my clients. But there, it is bad. And now up northern um, Texas, they're, they're more conditioned for it. They know when the freeze comes. They get snow every year. But we just didn't get snow. We didn't get a humongous ice storm. I can't even get my car out. I have a wrecker coming to get it, to get oh, it just on the street. It's worse than that. We don't have power. We don't have water. We're shoveling snow in the tub so we can use the toilets and stuff. So, you know, this is something that I've never seen. It's the grocery stores are closed and they only open for four hours and they only give you you only could buy 10 items. They they lost power. They had to throw away all their food. So everyone's buying all the dry food, you know. Right. It's not the frozen food. So it's not, it's just really bad. So uh, we have a major grocery store here called HEB and their power and everything went down. They let every customer take whatever groceries they had and just take it home for free Mm. because they couldn't charge them. They couldn't, and you have to pay cash because all the, all the power is down. So there's a lot going on and we'll get out of this. You know, we'll stay strong. And and as Americans, we all stay strong and Texas is good. And the hospitality in Texas is like you said, even if the codes aren't there saying that you have to have the super duper license, you know, right. to do something, it's the neighbors, the neighbors like to buy and support local. And I really feel like if you own your own business today, steer with that, steer right. with, 
I'm a mom and pop operation. Don't steer that you have 200 employees. Steer where this is my family. You know, I mm-hmm. always welcomed everyone to the family. Hey, welcome to the family. Welcome to Alexander's Carpet Care family. You know, you're part of it. And and they're my brothers, right? Right. So when you start relating to that, and, and that's Texas. Texas is a Southern hospitality. They like to support local. And I think as those Americans are coming back to that and, and I, I hope we are, but yeah. we, the big thing, I, the big thing I wanted to do and, and thank you for your prayers and everything. And we're, we'll make it through. Uh, we have one more day of freezing and then we get back up. We freeze one day next week, we freeze and then we get warm and then all that turns into ice and then we freeze again. So we have a layer of ice with snow on top. Yeah. We just got done snowing again and I'm in the hill country. So all my hills are really steep. So you just slide down the hill. Um, but what, what I wanted to make sure this has been great. I love this, this, this podcast and what you're doing and the people you're having. I can't wait to listen to more. Yeah, really. But I want to leave everyone with something of value. So you guys, all of you are going to have to Google this. This is remarkable. It's just so cool. I'm going to leave you with this Facebook. I got recognized and it was really cool to be recognized. They invited me to their grand opening of a, of a building in Austin. I went wow. to the building and they, 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 they found me. So I went to this building. I went up in the elevator security check. I went up. They had a cafeteria and it, they're going to be speaking all day. I was like, hey, this is cool. So I go up there and there's a cafeteria. I get a Gatorade and I get, you know, uh, what's those peanut butter uh, two, two in a pack that mom's peter butter uh, cookies yeah. anyways i grabbed those and i'm ready to pay and the and the woman escorting me in said hey uh what, what are you doing i go well i want to pay for this she goes no this is facebook you don't pay for it mm-hmm. and i go well what do you mean she goes i brought my dry cleaning in the other day and they got it done for me they <laughs> learned like, whoa they learned so from they google google started that right? Yeah, yeah, did they? Yeah, Google started so, that in Palo Alto. They were like literally they they cater their meals, they cater everything, they they do their dry clean. They even they can even stay on campus in 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 areas where they can, you know, they they dorms essentially if they stay there and they work late whatever, but they are taking care of and Facebook's the same way even here in New York. Mhm. Remarkable what 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 companies are looking at the value of their employees to keep them healthy, right? That came out in the nineties. People had to get well checkups and stuff and they would get a hundred dollars off on their insurance or whatever. So what, what's, what's going on is remarkable being recognized on Mason's network, right? And, and getting this, well, that led to an Oracle. Wow. Oracle had a, a, a meeting. They, they found out I was one of 50 people in the class. They invited me to Oracle. So I went to this humongous thing for Oracle. Right. And they talked about three things, analytics, mm-hmm. McDonald's bought this company for $300 million and, and it's, and they're reading things, right? Analytics, you're always gathering, finding out who your client is and what they're doing. They bought a company to read your license plate. So when you come to the drive through their digital screen, will have six or eight items of your top or things you buy all the time. <laughs> That's awesome. It, circle around back to McDonald's. How did you like that, huh? Oh so, man, yeah. So then Costco made an app, and this is a year and a half ago. Costco made an app, and when they opened the app, they ended up getting seventy-two uh, percent of all their people that are members subscribed to their app within thirty days, and uh, they have seventy-eight uh, million user uh, members, right? Yeah. So they got all these guys subscribing. And the reason for the app was so when they can read, when you're walking down a row, they say you normally buy this on this row. These are your frequently buys, just like Amazon with the cart, right? right. They normally buy a power cord with this. So we, they're gathering stuff all the time. 100%. Well, they're always trying to sell you something, right? Yes. Well, Ferrari, Ferrari was there too. You ready for this? Ferrari wanted to know the right client. They only make 7,700 cars per year, but 20,000 people want to buy their cars every year. So they wanted to know the right client to sell to, the guy who can afford a $1,200 oil change, the guy who will cherish the car and, and keep it, right? They're looking right. at a different value. Um, so what they did, they went to the analytics company and they said, tell me my top 50. And they went and made an oak box and they put a Ferrari key in it. And they said, we are going to sell 50 of these Ferraris. It's going to be called the quad. And 
we don't, uh, you know, that's, that's about it. We want to know our top 50 when we'll go sell it. It's going to be a special edition. They came back and they gave him the 50 people. The analytics analyzed them to the penny, to the person, right? 50 person. They, they came back, they went to all 50 customers and they sold it like this. Hey, so we're here to sell you. We're making a special edition called the quad uh, Ferrari next year. Would you like one? Customers would say, okay, how much? Uh, we don't know. 1.1, 1.3 million euros, but we're not sure. And they're like, okay, how much, how many horsepower? Six, 700. We don't know. What's it going to look like? We don't know. When's it going to be available? We're hoping next year, but it could be a couple of years. We, we don't know. How many of those 50 people with that sales pitch bought, do you think? Probably all 50. 49. <laughs> One, because the health condition did not buy. Oh, my God. One. Yeah, because, because the demand is there. Yes. So, and they knew the right person. Now you're going to say, well, anyone could go to the richest people in the world. No, no, no. They knew their market, just like you should know your market. So getting on this, I want everyone on this show that listen, please reach out to me. Feel free to call me at any time. Uh, email me. Uh, I have a, a consulting company called Call to Action, but uh, you know my phone is always on uh, 512-350-7102 or my email. It's just masonatomano at gmail.com. But just feel free to reach out to me. You can find me anywhere. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big guy. I find what I want you to do is Google this video business cards, videos, brochures. Two years ago, I introduced them to the carpet cleaning and restores industry. It's basically an iPad. You can get them made for 50 bucks to 100 bucks, and they're a full on digital flyer of your business. It's even better. Wait, there's more. I feel like an infomercial. commercial. <laughs> Wait, there's more. Can't do this all day. You can change it. You could change it. it you, there's a plug in, right. uh, USB plug, and you can change it with your updated information. So you don't have to. So the video business card, you can open up and they can see your fleet or whatever on your video brochures. You can mail it. You can mail this to the person you can't get past the gatekeeper. Awesome. I guarantee they're not going to. I use this. I went in to a realtor's office and they wouldn't give me the time of the day to talk to the broker and talk to them. I ended up mailing one to the broker. The broker ended up at their next sales meeting, invited me, and he held it up. And he told every one of the realtors, this is a video brochure. This carpet cleaner right here did this. I just want to tell you guys that this is, is what makes an impact, a positive impact. 100%. And, man. and I ended up having every one of the realtors paying attention to me and that broker not being paid to advertise for me. How, how many of those people you think are using me now? You know what I mean? Right. So that, that's what the people need to know is we have to embrace the new digital. We have to embrace, even though some things are old, like podcasting, they're at the all-time high right? because people have more time in their car, on their plane. And I, I like listening when I'm working on my car. So, you know, I, I have uh, – my dad had a 1955 International 3 on the tree uh, pickup. He gave it to me in 84, 85. I still have it. So how many of you guys could say you still have your very first car, you know? Oh, so wish. this is stuff. I embrace this stuff. I embrace everyone that uh, every one of your listeners, uh, you for giving me uh, time today, but I'm going to tell you, Google, please, every one of your listeners, Google. I gave you not one tidbit. I gave you two. I believe there's every time someone gives me their time, I need to give something back. 100%, and my yeah. give back is is look at changing your schedule of your employees to a four-day work week, maybe four 10-hour days, or even less hours. Employees just want more of their time. Now, don't go to an old buck like me and say, hey, you can work four days. I won't care. I'll still work seven. Right. You know? So go go to the go to the right person and see if it, if that's an option that they would be more steered to your company. And then Google video business card, video brochure, and blow your mind away. I have uh, on Mason's, uh, not on Mason's network, on, uh, I think on Call to Action, I have the video of it. But anything you guys need, feel free to call me. I'll be there. My, you know, I do get busy, so I will get back with you. I always return every call. 512-350-7102. 
Oh no, you're uh, quite, you're, no. you're extremely, I, I was in shock how, you know, I think I remember talking to you, I says, you want to reschedule when you're not so busy. I know you got a lot going on. No, 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 I, I got this. <laughs> I, I, I'm cut from the same cloth. And, and going into what you were just talking about, I actually had much better luck with millennials and hiring that generation. I invite people, even on my site, on my Service Without Excuses uh, member page here that I have, the Mastermind Group page, I have a video and I can always repost it. Now after discussion, I think I'm going to repost it. Simon Sinek, one of the world's greatest leadership um, mentors, unbelievably brilliant guy. He has a video about millennials and really breaks it down. And, and it's exactly the same way. They want purpose. They want some part of meaning. And if you can work within what they, what they're looking for, you not only retain people, you'll have them a lot happier and they won't go somewhere else when somebody else, yes. you know, offers them a lot more money. So yes. I think they're much better personally than what, you know, and, and they don't have really a lot of bad habits. Like, listen, everybody has, there's, there's, there's people out there all over the place that don't want to work and that's fine, but that's not the excuse. That's the exception, not the rule. Most do want to work. Most, I had a kid out here today. It was 22 years old, if that, and it's Jeep and he's helping me shovel my driveway. Now I'm 50 years old. So I'm, I'm out there yeah. shoveling this heavy snow. My wife goes, I'm going to call this guy and just have him help with this side of the driveway. Now, again, like you said, stubborn old buck, I'm out there shoveling when I shouldn't be, but I am my, my, my uh, blower broke, the blade broke. So you got to do it old school. He came up and helped me and worked. I, and I have a job coming up. I would love to have taken him on, but he's not going to be. In, he's not going to be around at that point. He's going out of the state. So, Mason, dude, thank you, man. I, can't, I we got to do more of these. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not being flatter. I'm not a flattering kind of guy. I say that all the time. I'm just not. But you have such energy and such charisma. That's that's perfect for this. And and I'm going to give you a small piece of advice. You should go back to doing your podcast. I know you're crazy busy, but you would be freaking phenomenal at it man i mean it's it, it it takes when you're doing a podcast you have to be able to do the podcast on your own and you have the ability which is rare to do a podcast completely on your own about a subject i do them all the time some they're some of my highest rated downloads however you have that same charisma you can talk for 30 minutes and not sound not go back to the same situation twice not go back to the same story twice to cover real information and make an impact quickly so my advice to you is man get your podcast back up when you can. I think you do very <laughs> I, good and stream it on your stream I, it on your page. Yeah, I deeply appreciate that. I really enjoy this. This this podcasting stuff's just remarkable for me to to be able to get in in into people's ear and 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 help them and mold them just like so many people molded me. Uh it, it's it's remarkable for me. So I really enjoy that. Um I had a boss when I worked at uh, Ramsco it was called the Interlink at the time. He was CEO for the boss and he goes Mason it's remarkable how we totally went off subject and you came back with the very next word from where I cut you off, you know? And I go, well, I, I guess I just pay attention to details, but I care about people. And I think that's remarkable. But if people looked at that video business card and, and listen to these podcasts, I guarantee it's going to be remarkable. 100%. And um, yeah. And, and I'm not saying spend a million dollars on them, right? Maybe buy a couple yeah. and just show them and get them back. But it, there, there, there's something it's, you need to look at the other industries to bring it in. What did Mason's network do to the carpet cleaning restorers industry? It copied the other trades and brought right. it into this industry. That's all I did. I didn't make it up. I We brought it in. So I, when you reach out and it's just a fun thing, uh, you know, I've been very blessed. I believe I, I'm one very lucky man. I believe you make your luck. So I worked hard to get where I'm at and yep. a lot of failures and a lot of success. And, uh, this, this is one of them. I, I, this was, uh, I was excited for this. My wife, my wife kind of laughed at me. She, she thinks I'm like a teenage boy gets all excited for his first date again. You know, <laughs> Yeah, I, get the same uh, I remember thing. my first date with my wife in, in 1989, we went to a football game. And then afterwards I sh showed her how to drive the pickup truck stick and, you know, and, and our first kiss was on the porch, you know, just excited. I wanted to kiss her all night. So, you, you know, that's the kind of excitement and people feel that and they work yes, off they that energy and, and I had one boss named Stan. He was awesome. And he said, Mason, you're like, you're like a tornado. It's still there two weeks later <laughs> because it's <laughs> awesome. You know, yeah. you just have that. It's called passion, my friend. At the end of the day, it's yeah. passion. You have to have passion for what you do. We can, you can, we can call it love. We can call it hard sure. work. We can do. But if you don't have passion for what you're doing, man, just, you know, do something else. Life is too short. Yeah. You yeah. know, do something that makes you happy. So right now, my passion is my son. My son came to me two years ago. He goes, Dad, um, will you coach my team? So that's why I'm not in the corporate world. I'm my, my son's uh, baseball coach. 
And I got to tell you, it's so much fun to be there for him, see him grow. For the past two years, he's 11. He was nine when I started being a head coach. I was always his head. His, I was always his assistant coach, right. but a head coach and traveling. It was, it was hard. And uh, we're building a baseball diamond in the backyard with real scoreboards. I put a dugout, concession stand, everything, and I'm buying all the stuff used from Little League uh, fields all across uh, Texas. And um, it's, so like you said, passion. And uh, it's exciting to be there for him and, and to slow down a little bit. You know, I, I know I have to go back to work right now. We're just, you know, and more of survival, just make enough money to pay the bills so right. I can be a dad. But, um, you know, I'm going to have to go back full swing again, but, uh, I'll go back when he, he doesn't want to hang out with me. <laughs> there you go, man. All right, Mason, my friend, you, right. you have a great night, man. I th- again, thank you again. We got to do another one soon. And, yes. uh, and thank you so much for your time. And again, please be safe. And my prayers go out to all you folks in Texas right now. Well, thank you so much and bless you guys all. And I really appreciate the podcast. It means a lot to me. I, I was real excited about it. You're awesome, man. I can't wait to put it right. out. Have a great night. You have a good one. Bye. Bye-bye. 